the emergence of the Hebrew quotative construction containing asa, do, make, a multimodal perspective by Hila Polak, Polak Itzhaki from the University of Haifa. Please go ahead, 18 minutes. Hello, everyone. In this presentation, I focus on the Hebrew quotative construction containing asa, roughly equivalent to English do or make, in everyday video conversations. This construction, introducing reported speech or constructed dialogue to follow tenant's term, is composed of an optional personal pronoun, followed by the present tense verb in masculine osse or feminine osa, followed by an optional dative pronoun. Most tokens are in third person, uoseli or he or sally, he or she does to me, as in the following example, uoseli lolo anipseder, he does to me, no, no, I'm fine, which may be translated into English as he goes, no, no, I'm fine, and no, no, I'm fine is the constructed dialogue here. And there are also a few tokens in first person. I will try to explain how this quotative construction has evolved in the discourse. The idea of constructions evolving from discourse, from the manner by which speakers employ a sa, the do verb, in interaction, is a manifestation of the emerging grammar theory, which emphasizes the temporality of discourse and its dynamic nature. I will show that the quotative construction containing a sa is a fixed and formulaic construction emerging from discourse. It signals a shift in the discourse into more constructed dialogue involving outrageous, funny, or surprising information in the story world. Its uses are closely tied to prosodic, morphophonological, and syntactic properties of the construction. Based on mostly asynchronic, but also on some diachronic analysis of the data, I will suggest a grammaticization path leading to this construction. Similarly to other do verbs in many languages, people are size very frequent, and it may denote a wide range of activities, including body movements, gestures, non-lexical sounds, and constructed dialogue. In fact, introducing constructed dialogue is a function that has only evolved recently. In other languages, mainly Germanic languages, verbs of motion are employed instead, even though typologically employment of verbs of doing in this function is more frequent. Many studies were written on verbs of motion and verbs of doing involved in introducing constructed dialogue in a variety of languages. Some of them are presented here. Many studies point out the strong connection between grammaticization processes and the involvement of linguistic means introducing constructed dialogue. The corpus consists of video recordings of spontaneous informal Hebrew interactions between friends and relatives, as you can see here in the slide. The data are transcribed according to Santa Barbara transcription method. Mundada's transcription conventions are used for embodied conduct. There are 81 tokens of ASA introducing nonverbal or verbal actions in the data. Most tokens were complemented by a dative pronoun. Most of them were in third person, and the great majority were in the singular. When ASA is employed within a construction introducing verbal actions, it tends to undergo morphophonological reduction. This raises the question, how has this construction evolved? This, path, this suggested path describes how from a verb phrase introducing nonverbal actions, such as body movements, gestures, and non-lexical sounds, evolved the construction introducing verbal actions accompanied by mimetic behavior. We can see that in the middle stage, some tokens function as a verb phrase introducing nonverbal actions accompanied by verbal actions, and some tokens already function as a quotative construction. Thus, in the first stage, the verb denotes doing. In the middle stage, it denotes doing and saying. And in the third stage, it has evolved into a do quotative construction denoting saying and doing. When a sagramaticized as part of a quotative construction, it acquired properties characterizing verbs of saying, and it displayed further developments and diversification of use. Moving now to the analysis, 
First, I demonstrate the stages of the suggested grammaticization path. We'll first see an ASA token introducing nonverbal actions. Prior to the beginning of this excerpt, Marina tells her friends Gaia and Ila that she is about to travel to Uganda for 10, for 10 days. Ila expresses her concern regarding Uri, Marina's one-year-old baby, and in response, Marina jokingly conveys that Putski, Gaia's baby, who is around the same age as Uri, will look after Uri, since one can trust Putski. Ila agrees with this statement and depicts the imaginary scene in the eyes of her friends. Let's watch. <laughs> According to Ila's imaginary scene, Marina walks with her suitcase and Putski, Gaia's baby, communicates with gestures that she has nothing to worry about because he is taking care of everything. Marina agrees with Hila and produces hypothetical lexical utterances in Putski's voice. Marina, go have fun. Everything's fine. I'm here. She ends with a non-lexical utterance imitating the way baby Putski sounds, Tata. At this point, Gaia takes the turn and clarifies that there is a difference between the vocal behavior of the two babies, Uri and Putski. Uri, Marina's baby, is the one who tends to produce non-lexical sounds similar to the sounds Marina employed, Tata. Whereas Putski, Gaia's baby, tends to employ a gesture of waving his hand accompanying the lexical utterance bye-bye. Let's focus first on the way the non-lexical utterance is introduced. The present tense form of the verb asa, do, is employed for this purpose, ose. It indicates an habitual action characterizing the way Uri talks. In Hebrew, it is possible to employ the verb asa not only to introduce gestures on non-lexical sounds, but also to introduce gestures accompanying lexical utterances. I consider this a further involvement towards the possibility of a sa to introduce speech and not just sounds and gestures. Let's watch again only the part where Gaia introduces Putski's utterances. Putski said, bye bye, <laughs> bye bye. Gaia employs the present tense form of the verb asa to introduce Putski's typical utterance bye-bye. Immediately after the production of the verb osse, Gaia opens her mouth and starts lifting her right hand. When she produces the lexical bye-bye, she opens and bends her fingers in a gesture of waving goodbye. She continues producing the gesture, even with, with no sound accompanying it, overlapping her interlocutor's laughter, token of agreement, and later on, another lexical bye-bye she produces in Putski's voice. The lexical utterance bye-bye and the waving goodbye gesture are interchangeable. Saying bye-bye and waving the head for goodbye are in fact two ways, literal vocal and bodily visual, of performing the same action. When the literal utterance accompanies the gesture, these two ways intertwine, and they are both introduced into the discourse via asa. We'll see now a token of asa introducing verbal actions with mimetic behavior. In this excerpt, Amit, who is a waitress in a pub, tells her friend Tom how she urged Noam, another waitress working with her, to tell her why she was upset. Let's watch. <laughs> Amit employs many different means for introducing the constructed dialogues in this excerpt. Say, look, like, and do. 
First, she employs the, pres the past tense form of the verb say to introduce with no special mimetic behavior her uh, attempt to find out what happened to Noam. Noam's refusal to cooperate is introduced with the present tense form of the verb look indicating past actions. When Noam starts to cooperate, her constructed dialogues are introduced via constructions containing the verb asa, do. The full construction, and then she does to me, is used for introducing Noam's hesitation and fear of being laughed at, and the morphous syntactically reduced construction, he sa, she does, is used for introducing Noam's main response, explaining why she was upset. In Hebrew then, a do quotative construction can be employed to introduce speech which cannot be replaced by gestures. Note that a present tense verb here does not indicate an habitual action, in difference to what we saw earlier, but rather introduces past actions as in all tokens of a sac quotative construction. When Amit introduces the reasons for Noam's bad mood, not only does she present the content of these reasons, but also the way they were produced. The mimetic behavior introduced by the asak quotative construction plays a prominent role here. Amit enacts Noam's explanation as an actor in a play. She changes her tone, takes on Noam's voice, and employs marked prosody and gestures. She speaks loudly, lengthening the last syllables of her intonation units, and constantly waving, moving her hands in a pronounced manner. There, there is a, di a distinct difference between Norm's multimodal behavior prior to the production of the She Does quotative construction and after it. Moreover, there is also a difference between Norm's disappointment and pain expressed in the content of the constructed dialogue and between Amit's exaggerated enactment and her mocking and judgmental mimetic behavior. In this way, Amit's voice is also heard through the constructed dialogue in a way that reflects the polyphony or the layering of voices existing when introducing constructed dialogues, as Bakhtin and later on Guntna have shown. These dramatizing devices create interpersonal involvement, to use Tannen's term, and help Tom feel part of the reported interaction. Tom's involvement in Amit's constructed dialogue can be seen in the way she collaborates in the telling and creates an additional utterance in Noam's voice. Finally, once a sa has grammaticized as part of a quotative construction, it acquires syntactic and prosodic properties characterizing verbs of saying. For example, it may be de deployed with a complementizer constituting indirect speech, as in the last excerpt we see here from 2019, as recent as 2019. Amit and Tom talk about Yar, a girl they dislike. Yar is a friend of Noam, the same girl mentioned previously, who works with Amit at the pub. One day, Yar visited Noam at work and freaked out on her. She went away because she felt that Noam paid attention to her other friends and not to her. Noam told about this episode to Amit, and in this excerpt, Amit tells Tom about it. <laughs> כזה נועם שהיא עושה כזה שהיה בכלל להשיג זה יום אחד שבכלל אני אשב לי נראה לי זה אני אשב אף נועם ואז היא ארבע והיא פשוט כאילו או משהו כזה ואני פשוט הלכה וכאילו היא אמרה לה שאני הולכת להביא משהו מהאוטו ואז היא פשוט הלכה אז נועם אמרה שהיא כזה אחרי חצי פעמים כזה שהיא לא חוזרת שלך לא יודעת כזה איפה את כותבת אני בבית וואלה Prior to this excerpt, Tom stated that Ya is not so nice. Amit provides her an example that supports Tom's negative stance and proves it. She tells that no one told her about Ya's unexpected and unfriendly behavior when she came to visit Noam at work. All the friends were sitting together. Ya was sitting with them, but suddenly she simply left. And it turned out that she went home because Noam already had other friends. Amit, and probably also Noam, describes this behavior with the words Yah like freaked out on her. And this description is introduced into the discourse via the quotative construction containing the present tense form of Asa. However, this time the complementizer She, that, 
is employed after the construction, indicating a third person report in the form of an indirect speech. Even though this is the only ASA token of this kind in our corpus, it does not sound weird or unnatural to native speakers. There is a strong connection between employment of a sign introducing indirect speech and introducing indirect speech with the verb of saying. Amit chooses first to introduce norm speech with an indirect speech construction containing tell, but she abandons this way and chooses a different way, this time with a construction containing the verb asa. These are parallel constructions. The difference is that when a regular verb of saying is employed, tell, the verb is in past tense form. Whereas when Amit self repairs and chooses the verb asa, she employs it in the present tense form, indicating past actions, as we saw in the quotative construction. This token supports Bakhtin, Becker and Hopper's claim that utterances are built according to prior familiar patterns and not according to abstract rules. In this token, as in other tokens of a quotative construction, there is no mimetic behavior. Let's watch again only the two tokens of tell and do to see that there is no mimetic behavior. We can see then that a sub functions here as a verb of saying and no longer as a, as a verb denoting saying and doing. As such, it acquires properties characterizing verbs of saying. It can now also introduce indirect speech, similarly to other verbs of saying. Regarding English narrative Go, Butters writes, so far, it does not seem to have spread to indirect discourse or to interrogatives, though this may come in due time. The possibility of a new quotative verb such as go or asa to introduce indirect speech is a further involvement of, of the verb in the construction. We see then that once the construction has grammaticized, it continues to develop new grammatical functions. A grammaticized construction is not the end of a process it continues to evolve in different directions in an ongoing process. The following slide summarizes the morphosyntactic differences between the use of a size of verb phrase introducing nonverbal actions and as part of a quotative construction. I don't have time to focus on each of these differences. I'll just say that they suggest the categorization losing the morphosyntactic optionality of a linguistic form, which is one of the main principles of grammaticization. To conclude, we have seen how the quotative construction containing asa evolved from the discourse, from the way speakers use their language in interaction. We have also seen that once the construction has grammaticized, it continued to develop further properties and uses. In this way, the study sheds light on the reciprocal relation between grammar, body, and interaction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for several questions. Please go ahead, raise your hands, speak up, Q&A, whatever is good for you. Maybe you would like to ask about the previous presentation. Yael, would you like to ask a question or to expand on something? Um, okay. Um, yeah, Hila. So, um, how how would you like? Can you can you say more about the grammaticization path here? Um, like somebody could say, well, you have this. Uh, this form and this form and how do you know which one came first like we've seen a synchronic analysis here how can we know that the hypothesized grammaticization path is uh really what happened here yeah okay thank you for the question yeah um first we have diachronic um data uh, concerning the um, evolvement from the first stage of denoting, um, asa denoting um, non-lexical uh, sounds and gestures and 
um, and the, the um, third stage uh, in which ASA uh, introduces is um, function in a quotative construction introducing speech or constructed dialogue. Because uh, I remember when I was a child, it was not, you couldn't use a SA in order to introduce speech. So this is uh, uh, the acronic um, um, data that I have concerning the um, shift from the first stage to the third stage. Um, the second stage is my hypothesis. I um, can imagine that if ASA was employed to introduce um, sounds of, of an airplane or um, um, animals, um, and later on it developed to introduce also um, constructed dialogue and speech and human speech, then I guess that the uh, combination of gestures and uh, speech that accompany them came afterwards. But this is my hypothesis. I don't have data, um, diachronic data. And maybe I should, um, I wanted to add it before, but I didn't have time in the presentation just to say that this is a part of a larger uh, study that compares between uh, the two verbs introducing constructed dialogues in um, um, Hebrew, French, and Italian, together with Sophia Fiedler from Neuchatel University and Hamburg University, and together with um, uh, Virginia Calabria from uh, Leuven University and Neuchatel University. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry, uh, I keep forgetting. There is a question. So maybe, in fact, there are two questions. So one question by an anonymous attendee concerning the topic of motion and uh, saying verbs, is there any difference in terms of word order and the gesture analysis? For example, who li o se? Uh, is who li o se still a possible structure? And if yes, what can be possible, the possible explanation with the examples presented in the slide? And please remember, there is another question coming. Okay, uh, Julio said was not found in the data and to a native speaker, it sounds really weird. <laughs> uh, so no, in the gesture, when, when uh, Asa introduces gestures on non-lexical sounds, it does not occur and no introducing speech. Um, but um, I can say that in, uh, I found some cataphoric uh, uses of um, OSE um, only when the ASA uh, introduces gestures and non-lexical sounds and none of those were um, uh, found when it introduces speech. So it can be like the non-lexical sound and then he does to me or he does. Okay, another question from Georgia Troiani. Uh, Hila, did you notice if when the do construction is employed as a quotative, it had some specific prosodic qualities? In Italian data, it seems to me that when people use a similar construction, mi fa, he, she, does to me, followed by constructed dialogue, they tend to lengthen the end of the verb and place uh, the IU boundary between the quote and the quotative. Yeah, thank you for the question. This is one of the um, topics that, uh, that raised when uh, Virginia and I discussed the, the, um, our data. And this is one of the difference actually between uh, Italian and Hebrew construction that Hebrew tends to, um, as I said, the verb tends to undergo morphophonological reduction. It's uh, se or sa. Uh, and there's no lengthening of the verb. And in Italian, there is, um, um, it was found in the data that uh, the verb is lengthened. And this is one of the things that we are going to look at more deeply. Thank you. 